السلام عليكم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The world we live in is the world of opposites We have people who are rich and people who are poor We have people who are just and merciful and then we have people who are unjust and cruel We have people who are honest and those who are dishonest. It is a world that is mixed with opposites. Mankind's existence and makeup was designed and created for tests and trials. After all, if everyone was kind, merciful, honest, etc., etc., and the opposites did not exist, then there would be no need to test. If one believes in God and the reason for his creation, then he would know a major reason for his creation is to be tested. Why? Because he's given intellect, the ability to decide. You know, he has will, he thinks, he doubts, he regrets a decision, he thinks about the consequence of an action. Such a being may make mistakes or may do right. Therefore, he's tested. Quran emphasizes on tests and trials multiple times in multiple verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alladhi khalqal mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. He who created death and life so that he may put you to a test to show which of you is best in deeds, in conduct. Chapter 67, verse 2. That means Allah Azzawajal has a purpose for everything. He created life and death for a purpose. His purpose is to allow human to make the right choice as he has been given the gift of choice free will. He has given human the intellect, the guidance, and the conscious to follow the divine guidance and reach his potentials to the point of Kamal, perfection. However, there are those who choose not to follow other paths. You know, just like the student in a class, some will pass the test and some will not. The test aims to establish a reality God knows already, but to reward according to their action and deeds. And the verse says, so that he may put you to test, to a test, to show which of you is the best in deeds, to show. Hence, we must always be on the alert considering every action and deed before we do it. While the above verse was in general for all mankind, given the reason for our creation, in addition, there are verses also exclusive to believers. As the Quran says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ People think that they will be left alone by saying we believe and that we will not be tested and we will not test them. They will not be tested just because they were created and are among the believer. They are left alone and will not be tested. And then it answers in the next verse and says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We did test those before them and so most certainly Allah knows those who speak the truth and most certainly He knows those who are liars. So this is chapter 29 verses 2 and 3. Those who came before them were also tested. This is the disposition, sunnah, of Allah. 
The surah, chapter 29, begins speaking about faith and the hard tests believers are subjected to in order to make their belief a reality. It mentions that it is through such testing that true believers are distinguished from liars. What they say, they actually do. One can always claim anything, but it all comes down to the action. I can claim to be the best distance swimmer, but unless I'm put to, the, to test in the water, it is only a claim. Here, Quran asks, in the form of rhetorical question about people's concept of faith, they often imagine that it is merely a word they utter. Do people think that once they say we are believers, they will be left alone? Belief is not a mere word, we say. It is a reality that imposes duties, a trust that carries requirements and struggle that demands patience and perseverance. It is not enough that people should claim to believe. They are subjected to tests in order to prove their sincerity and to metal, just as gold is tested with fire to separate it from cheap elements, cheap metal. The Qur'an even gives examples of things that Allah will test us with. As it says, Be sure we will test you with something of fear and hunger, some loss in wealth or lives or the fruits of your work. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. Chapter 2, verse 155. Some of us lose our wealth, hence become poor. Some become hungry. Some lose their loved ones. Some lose their business or crops. Some test it through their children, through their parents or relatives. Allah says, we will all be tested on different things. However, those with iman, hope, and patience will pass the test. Those who are steadfast and persevere. <coughs> patience and perseverance are tools to strengthen one's character and the soul. The glad tiding is for the believers who go through these tests with patience. In the next verse, Allah describes them. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَسَابَتَهُمْ مُسِيبَتٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And then it says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ those who, when afflicted with calamity, hardship, say they don't lose their sight, they don't lose their iman. They say, we belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. Such are the people on whom there are blessings and mercy from Allah. And they are the ones that are rightly guided. Chapter 2, verses 156 through 157. Remember that Allah will not afflict anyone more than what he or she can handle, more than what he or she can bear. Allah Ta'ala says in Quran, Allah does not burden any human being with more than he can bear. Chapter 2, verse 286. Therefore, if anyone is tested with some severe tests, then, according to this ayah, to this verse, Allah has given him more and more strength than other people. Because then he can handle it. So he can handle it. Allah says, those who endure with patience will be rewarded without measure. So Allah is even talk, in here talks about the reward as well. 
So the wealth and children, both of which have always been and will be important part of human life, are means by which we are all tested. As Quran says, Innama amwalakum wa awladukum fitnatun wallahu innahu ajrun azim. Your wealth and your children are only a trial, but the reward, the reward which one may receive from God is great. Chapter 64, verse 15. And remember, the messengers of God went through the toughest trials. Now, some people who have doubts, shubahat, ask the following question. Doesn't Allah know what we are going to do? Why does he test us then? After all, isn't testing for someone who doesn't know and wants to find out? Like for example, the teacher tests, you, the teacher tests his students in order to know which one has studied and deserves to be, you know, to go to the next grade because he or she does not know how much a student has studied. But Allah already knows, then why the test? Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib has given the answer to this question in Nahjul Balagha. As he is reported to have said, Allah tests people even though he is more aware of them than they are of themselves. He knows more about them than they know about themselves. However, he tests them so their actions manifest, so it becomes evident who will be rewarded and who will be punished. In other words, the deed, good or bad, have to be committed. All the deeds, good or bad, have to be committed then, as a consequence, the person is to be rewarded or punished. God, God certainly knows what people keep in their heart before any tests. But the test reveals in practice what is already known to God, yet hidden from the human knowledge. He therefore makes people accountable what, for what they actually do, not for what he already knows about them. He also knows at the time we have free will and could have chosen a different way. This is in one sense an act of grace, while in another sense it is an act of justice. At the time, it teaches, a, uh, you know, but also beside the grace part of it and the justice part of it, it teaches a lesson to people so that they do not hold anyone accountable for anything other than what is clearly apparent of their deeds and what such deeds entail. If I haven't seen you doing anything, and I, if I haven't seen the deed, then I cannot judge you for it. They should remember that they cannot know what is in another's heart. Only God knows that. An authentic hadith states, the most severely tested are, tested are prophets. Then the most pious people, then the ones closest to these people, one degree after another. A man will be tested in accordance with his strength of faith." Unquote. As we discussed before, there are creatures or beings whose actions are predetermined, or what we call jabri. Therefore, if they do good, they should not be admired. And if they do bad, they are not admonished or disciplined, because that is how they were created. Their actions are predetermined, predestined, like animals when they kill each other to provide for their young ones. You know, they're not going to be punished for it. That's how they were created. 
However, a creature, a being who is free to choose, if he does something good, he deserves to be admired. And if he does something bad, he's admonished. He is disciplined. He's scolded. And the rewards and punishments are only on those bases because human beings are independent and have free will. So God tests A, so the action becomes evident, and B, so the concept of rewards and punishment is preserved. Therefore, we say followers of fatalism, jabriyun, those who accept passivity, who attribute too many things to predetermination, predetermination or predeterminism, uh, present a case that is not rational, does not make sense. Jabr or predestination contradicts the concept of duty and responsibility, taklif. If someone is predestined or forced to do something, then he can't be held responsible for his actions. If he does bad, he did not have a choice. And if he does good, he did not have a choice. There are rules and regulations, the divine laws telling us to do certain things and not to do certain things. This is why, fundamentally, all faiths are in opposition to the concept of predestination, predeterminism, when it comes to individual deeds, a'mal. So Allah knows from very beginning that you and I will commit such and such act in such and such day. But he also knows you and I have free will. That is, we will commit the act, but also our rights to choose is intact. So when I choose to drink alcohol, not only Allah is aware of my action, or was before I did it, he also knows I had a choice not to drink. His knowledge also includes my choice. People forget about this part. Also, his knowing what I will do does not impact my decision. Jabriyun somehow want to release people from responsibility. They say, hey, it is Jabr. It is predestined. Therefore, we're not responsible. Just seize the opportunity and go after whatever seems okay. At any case, the tests mentioned in Quran, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala, So that he may try, test, which of you is best indeed. He tests you to see when it comes in action, which of you does good. Quran emphasizes this a lot. These are not so God's knowledge become complete. No. This is so our actions and deeds appear, emerge, and manifest themselves. So we deserve. We gain rights and merits for rewards or punishment. God has not intended for someone to incur punishment if he has not gained the right or merit for it. So these are the things we need to keep in mind when we discuss, you know, uh, God's testing. While we don't know which test and when, we know it is through test that a person can be shown to be good or bad. We, we can look at the history and learn as to how some people were tested. Going back to early Muslim times may not be desirable to some people as, uh, you know, they may think it was a different time and things were different and we're supposed to be looking forward, not backward, and that we're responsible for what we do today. Yes, true. 
But we must know that the nature of things people were tested on in those days have not changed. Their condition or makeup may have changed. The application may have changed. For example, they had all kinds of hardships back then. So do we today, but in a different way. This is why Quran talks about the people of the past. Not to make distinction or tell a story of, you know, for our inter entertainment, but so we learn lessons from them. Story of Yusuf and Musa and Abraham, peace be upon them, and rest of them. You know, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in their stories is a lesson for people of understanding. Chapter 12, verse 111. And the Qur'an says wealth is not bad. Let's say you inherit a million dollars from a relative, inshallah. It is not bad, it is khair. But what you do with it is the question. And can you pass the test with it is the question. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ We will test you with what we have given you. Chapter 6 Verse 165, is this wealth going to control you, make you spend it on useless things, use it for forbidden things, or are you going to control it and use it on that which pleases Allah? وَنَبْلُوَكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ And we test you by evil and by good. By the way of trials, to us you shall return. Chapter 21, verse 35. We must continuously be careful and cognizant about these tests. As the Quran, as we mentioned, says people think that they will be left alone by saying we believe and that they will not be tested. No. No. You will be tested. And another thing from Nahjul Balaqa, Amir al Mumani Ali ibn Abi Talib, says that when this verse was revealed, I realized this verse is exclusively for the believers. So I, I asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, even true believers are tested? He replied, yes, those who take bribe and call it a gift. And those who take or give riba, interest, and say it is a sale or purchase, unquote. And, you know, this unfortunately happens in the Muslim world a lot. The man has a job and he has a duty. He has a duty to serve people in some capacity or in an office. And for that, he gets paid for. He gets paid for this job, yet he takes bribes. He says, if you give me something under the table, I will make sure this gets done. This is haram, forbidden, not to mention injustice and the disorder it creates. Or he charges interest and says, well, it is mu'amila, transaction or sale or a trade. Quran says that Allah permitted trading and has forbidden interest, riba. It's amazing how some believers, mu'mineen, make such justifications. This was just an example, of course. Therefore, we need to be very objective and honest with ourselves. Stop justifying things and start listening to our conscience. God has given human the conscience in order to wake him up and keep things in perspective. Judge things even though it may be against himself or his own family. There is even a narration from the Prophet, peace be upon him, about this man. 
uh, who came to him and asked him about his conscience. He said, O oh, messenger of God, sometimes when I need to do something, my conscience tells me it is wrong, it is a wrong thing to do, it is transgression or unjust, but when I talk to my friends about it, they somehow try to make excuses for me in order to justify it. You know, they do this because they like me and want to support me. What should I do? Who should I listen to? The Prophet, peace be upon him, answered, Ask your heart. See what your heart says. Even though the opinion, fatwa, givers give opinions. You look deep down in your heart and conscious. Then you know what is the right thing to do. When a person forgoes, gives up an instant but temporary joy. For who? For the sake of God. Later on, on, the, you know, later on in his life, he will feel good about it. He'll, he will, you know... He will say, that was a great decision I made. I did well. On the contrary, if he makes an unholy choice, a bad choice, and if he goes down the forbidden path, he may enjoy it in the moment, you know, instant gratification, but later on, especially if he's a good Muslim, he will feel uneasy about it. His conscience will bother him. He will feel bad about that decision, that action. Why did I do it? I knew this was a wrong thing to do. Why did I go down that path? You know, a thief knows stealing is wrong. He knows if someone steals his property, he won't like it. Yet, he does it himself. If someone wants a bribe from him, he won't like it. If someone takes interest from him, he won't like it, yet he does it himself. We humans are aware of ourselves, what we do and how we think. As Quran says, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَسِيرَ In fact, people are well aware of their own soul. He shall be clear proof against himself. He has full vision of his own nafs. Balil insano ala nafsihi basira. Walau alqa ma'adira. Even though he offers his excuses. Chapter 75, verses 14 and 15. He knows himself at the end of the day when he goes to bed what he has done and what he has not done. If he did something bad, he knows if it was done to him, he would, he would be screaming. He wouldn't like it. We ask Allah to help us listen to our conscience and not to fight it. We ask Allah to make his tests easy for us and give us the patience and perseverance to go through them and pass them. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام على من اتبع الهدى